everyone and welcome to the DJ Society podcast. Uh, my name is Tom and I'm here with Mike, the Vice President, and Priyesh, the Treasurer and Social Sec of the DJ Society. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> right, I can start with nightlife. Yeah, we're going to try and not keep it <coughs> fo- solely focused on DJ stuff. We're going to talk about a wide range of topics today. There we are. Um, just general stuff about Birmingham, you know, nightlife, sort of things to do in the city centre, you know, uni stuff you might not know. Um, Hidden gems, if anyone brought yeah. me, I, I may have how to them. How to live cheaply as a student, it's always helpful. When you guys go on nights out, where do you where do you tend to go normally? So uh, go on. No, I, I've started doing um, like live gigs now. Live, live music sort of? Yeah, like, there's so much like indie stuff in... Well, Dick Booth, yeah. Um, there's something like Mosley and King's Heat as well. Uh, a lot of pubs have like, have venues just above the pub that you pay like a five on the door and it could be a shoot night, but it could be a good night. We should probably say as well that for those people who don't know, you can sort of split Birmingham's nightlife into two sections. You've got Broad Street, which is your three. more commercial stuff. Three, yeah, three. three. Broad Street, your more commercial <laughs> stuff, and then Dig Beth is your more underground music, your sort of house and drum and bass sort of star stuff, and then you then got what Mike was talking about with yeah, live yeah. music. Yeah, and well, live when I say Dig Beth's still. I don't know, I think it used to be even bigger. There was a bigger scene for indie music in Birmingham, like. 15 years ago. Really? And then it sort of dipped. But now it's coming back. Like, there's a lot of, um, a lot of, because there's so many new bands, they've got a lot of sort of BBC One Extra type things. Yes, I do see a lot of live mm. posters around saying, you know, come to this. BMAs, yes. Music Awards, uh, they do monthly live gigs. It's like, it, there's a lot of smaller sort of university age bands that do a, yeah. a lot of the sort of indie rock stuff at the moment. Where do you normally go on? Mine's exactly. more of the commercial side. So Broad Street, you've got three main clubs. And you've got Prism, uh, Players and Rosies. Prism is the off the scale, I guess, big one, you can call it. You know, we've mm. all been Prism. You've got... Uh, like more of a cheesy indie rock room. You've got an R and B room if they've got it open, either on a what is it Tuesday or a Friday, Saturday, mm. um, and then you've got the main room, which is a collaboration of every music you can think of, um, and they generally hit into a bit of D and B as well on um, on a weekend in the main room. Actually, yeah, it gets quite heavy. I know there's DJ Darren Harding there. He's yeah, a, yeah he does a pretty <laughs> good job. Um, and then you've got players which run stews on a stu- Tuesday, which yeah, is yeah, stupid Tuesdays. Yeah, stupid Tuesdays, which is more uh, commercial, very charty upstairs and R and B downstairs. And that's more of a studenty night as well. So yeah, it's, uh, cheaper drinks and it's on a Tuesday night when no no other people would come round. Mm. No, yeah, it's really good like that. And then um, Rosie's is oh, wait, wait, wait. Rosie's, I guess this right, it's on Broad Street. I'm gonna I'm a take a wild guess. There's commercial and there's R&B and hip hop. Yeah. Oh, so, good. There you go. I'm good. They yeah. all do the same thing, really, if you think about it. But it's yeah, just the type of nights vary. Like because you have vodball on a Thursday, you've got the one pound fifty vodball shots. Yeah. Um, Rosie's again has that third room of cheese um, and a bit more, you know, indie yeah. kind of music. I quite like the retro sort of. Yeah, it's retro. It's in, cool, um, isn't it? Yeah. In Rose, that's quite a good room. But there are three very big venues. Prism would hit if you want to go to one of the biggest nights. I'd say Rosie's in second, and then um, Players mm. is the smallest out of the three. That's just Broad Street. you got other clubs like Pop World and um, what else is on Broad Street? Walkabout. Yeah. It's a standard sort of bar mm. club. There's a lot of walkabouts all over the country. Pop World. I mean, everyone knows what Weatherspoons is. You don't really need to... Well, they have commercial at one point. Uh, um, it's funny actually because I never, um, when in my fresh week, I never went to prison, and I always went to Rosie's or Players, and then on a, what on a Thursday? Well, for the for the whole of fresh week, so everyone would go out. Oh, most okay, days, right, yeah, yeah. After I suddenly realised there was this massive club at the end of the street called Prison. <laughs> and yeah, it's pretty big. Went there and realised it's twice the size of all the others combined. Yeah. <laughs> 
but it's the thing, like when impressive you, when you first go there. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like, huge. You sort of walk in, you like it's a super club. Like, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like a super club you'd find um, abroad, wouldn't you? You like somewhere very big, yeah, yeah, lots yeah. of rooms, lots of people, expensive mm. drinks. Yeah. Yeah. So you you get Tuesdays, which is work it, um, and that's more of the that's focused literally around R and B and hip hop and UK rap, grime, things like that. And then obviously on a Thursday, it's a bit more. You know, it's a bit more commercial in the main room, and then the side room takes that R and B and hip hop load. Mm. And then on a weekend, it's Prism, so it's a bit of everything. Um, but yeah, it's differentiated by three nights during the week. There's two of them are self-run. I, th- I know Thursday's quids in uh, at yeah. Prism. That's they got uh, one, so pound, one, one pound, one pound in, yeah. So. And they're always pretty keen to do deals on booths for birthdays and things like that. Mm. Yeah. All it takes is an Instagram message, really, doesn't it? It's not. That's with most clubs on Broad Literally, Street. I, I didn't really fuck onto that. Until you could get a lot out of them. Year. Yeah, if it's your birthday, Q jumps, they're always happy to help. <coughs> yeah. So anyone listening, if you're looking for a good deal for your birthday, <laughs> <laughs> definitely Instagram message. It's helped me a lot of times. We haven't been promoted by all these clubs. No, we, we are not sponsored. We're just praising them for the... Well, feel like it, will we? Good job we do, <laughs> yeah. We'll say anything. Just, if yeah, anyone just wants to sponsor us, please let us know. <laughs> Since I've been in second year, I'm more. <coughs> I tend to now go to dig Beth more just because that's kind of the music I'm into. So more of the the underground. So apparently that is happening like across the board. So even first years, freshers, even clubs, apparently like reporting really low numbers compared to freshers before because everyone's going to dig Beth and doing like live shows. So I've, I've noticed as well if I'm at a live show. The age range is like slowly going down and down and down. Yeah, there's way more people there. Yeah, yeah. It's that generation changed, and, and mm. it's like a difference of interests of what other people Literally older than us year. have grown up to. Yeah, you do find that though, don't you? You find that, that change in terms of interest in music and genres across a, ge- a generation. Well, yeah, but you think that the clubs would, I don't know, adapt to that. Yeah. Start playing different stuff, mm. but no. But clubs are very set in their way. That it's been like that for a long time now. There's always. Yeah, it's but not. Yeah. It says you're looking for. If you look for, if you're looking for a different night out as opposed to a different set of music, because you can go to a music, you can go to a club and find rock music. Oh yeah, of course, of course. But yeah. it's still a club night rather than like a live show. Yeah. Yeah, live shows are a completely different ball game. Something hard to beat. Uh. Yeah, you say that. In terms of terrible live shows. Yeah, I know. In terms of, well, a good live Uh, show, you know, you get some, a lot of different people. Karaoke Nights is a good live show. (laughs) All the students. I've I've never actually been to one of them. You're going to have to explain. I've never took part in one of them. I've been... In, I've been in sax when there was karaoke on. They do sa- uh, They do uh, karaoke Yeah, they now? do. So there's, yeah, oh, there's God, they do. a pub by Canvas called Sax of Potatoes, or shortened to sax, and they do, on Friday nights, I think they do karaoke night, and I went in one mm-hmm. to my flat, yeah. and we all um, did some karaoke with some local like, football people after, um, after a Birmingham City match, and they were all absolutely just hammered, just <laughs> shouting, just chanting whatever they could down the microphones. It was re- really good fun, but you know, I think you've got to be pretty. Um, yeah, this is the word. You've got to be in the right mindset to go to one of those. Things. Mindset. There you go. That's the word. Yes. Not well, careful then... of inebriation. <laughs> no, no, no. Mindset. That's... <laughs> to be honest, yes, you do a lot of um, karaoke nights as well that I've been to. Just come come to because they're quite fun, but you know, you don't have to drink to do karaoke. Yeah. No, of course, it's just a laugh at the end of the day, isn't it? And if yeah. you're if you're good at singing, which uh, I'm not, but if you're good at <laughs> singing, screw you. I'll definitely, <laughs> I'll definitely hit it up. <clears throat> so it's a good shout. But going back to um to Dick Beth, like Mike said, you know that um more people are now moving to that sort of mm. area. And I know last year in first year, you know, there's this event called Tech Two, which is more so like they do tech house, techno, a D and B room. Mm. It was always, it was hugely popular, but yet they still only did one or two events a term and now they pretty Most much times. see the recent one yeah it has yeah. been yeah but now or currently in second year they've been doing sort of one every two weeks and they pretty much sell them out every time and people are always looking to buy tickets and people are reselling tickets and mm-hmm. I think that's when you know a night out's going to be busy or very like pretty good when people begin to resell tickets there'll be a point yeah. where all the tickets are sold out and then you, you're having to struggle you're struggling to find a ticket and you're 
on Facebook Messenger groups and whatnot. Yeah. Do you know, I think that's when you really realise that a night out is generally going the good way. When you um, when you're just going to the pub, what 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 sort of pub do you go for? Either like a student union or more like um, a local kind of pub or a Weatherspoons or when it's more. This is my own experience from first year, second term. The sun was out every day. The SU just opened. We were here every day. It was uh, it was five beers for whatever it was, and it was just very convenient in a bucket. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Gosta, though. Gosta's very nice oh, in the sun. Gosta. You know, they've got such a nice beer garden outside. Yeah. The SU has the balcony, but it's hard to beat a nice beer garden with some booths and pool tables mm. and... To and TVs. Gosta beers. And yeah, Gosta beers are very, very nice. They're jam donut, that's the one. Tiny Rebel Jam Out, okay. Recommendation here. I'll rave about it to everyone. But it, it tastes like a jam donut. <laughs> really? It, yeah. But it's, and it's so good. I was like, is it a pint, is it? Yeah. yeah. But it tastes like donuts. Yeah. <laughs> it's. So, I'm telling you, like, oh, it's so good. I, whenever I find it, I immediately get. That I got it. I got it like two days ago. I haven't been to Gosta in ages. <laughs> we might have to go try it after this uh, Definitely. podcast. Definitely. Um, I think the best thing, surely, about Gosta is every Tuesday the twenty five p wings. Oh yeah. Oh, or is yeah. that Wednesday? Or no, Wednesday. 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 That's it. Pancake Tuesday. Tuesdays. So, yeah, every Tuesday twenty five p pancakes, and every Wednesday twenty five p wings. I've done it once. Oh, I've done it. First year, it was like first term. Well, yeah, I'm gonna manage about. I think it was. I want to say forty. 40 wow. wings. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I got 40 and I couldn't. Oh, that's too oh, much so for good. me. Oh. <laughs> but even even just a few, like 10, 10 mm. wings, and you can just so sit there. Get one. Yeah. You just get one wing. Like <laughs> 25 like a wing, wing, please. And you know, the bar's really well stocked at Gosta. You mm. know, any drink you want, mostly every beer, Ale. It's a bit pricey, but you get more an op- more like options. It's it's, yeah, it kind of it becomes worth it because everyone's kind of happy there. Like the beers on draft are good. I, I yeah, mm. they're they're always good. But then if you go on a Wednesday, then the the price of the wings cancels out the the price there you of go. the beer. So. Well, there you go. Or if you just get the wings, Bolt you know, pie. you Eat can have a massive meal. The <laughs> there's a there's a point collection system. You have your own card. Mm. Um, Double points on a Monday. Mm. That's another night out. Gosta Monday. That's a, literally on on campus. Yeah, literally. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's R and B, hip hop, and uh, Bangra, so varies. And um, it's the quickest place to get to because it's yeah, it is. It's a walk, walk, and it's very safe. I'd say that's the safest night out out of most nights out because mm. you walk it. Well, if you live on campus or nearby, yeah, sure. you know you've got what a maximum of a fifteen minute walk from there to yeah. what A to B. Minutes. Well, if you live on well, yeah, if you live on Baggett Street or you know Stan, in, in Stanleyforth House or somewhere like that, it's oh, a maximum oh, yeah. of ten. Well, that's a drunk stumbling fifteen minutes. No, um, fair, okay, to well, campus, it's a five, less than yeah. five. Yeah. yeah. If you if you live on campus, if you're if you live in the right flat, you can pretty much see the pub from your flat. Literally. Yeah. If even from uni, mostly all yeah. windows facing that way. If you want the safest night out or safest pub to go to, it's Gosta. But then you've got Weatherspoons on Corporation Street. The square peg. That's a good. That's a good weather. Which is a very, very good weather spoons. You know, I think the the thing that made weather spoons better was the app. Um, oh yeah, that saved. I didn't know about the app the first time I went in. So I went, I um, I don't think I've been to weather spoons until I got to uni. Oh, really? Like, okay. Yeah, no. Um, or like not that I could remember processing that oh, it's the spoons. Um, but I arrived and we were all looking at the menu. And then things started turning up at the table. And I was like, <laughs> there what's you go. happened? I'm, like, I'm missing something. And they all turned to me like, have you not ordered? And I was like, no, we've all been sitting here. How have you ordered? Like, yeah, no, the, yeah. the app is it's the good. best thing to happen to Weatherspoons. Yeah. Um, and Weatherspoons, that Weatherspoons, it's got a, a long bar, a very long bar. Mm. It's actually a fact, actually. I was sitting Sorry. there. Um, and on the wall they have a few facts about that Weatherspoons and yeah there is something on there about the length of the bar well it's because it's so old one of the facts is that it's the first Weatherspoons to be opened outside of London in the country well they yeah Yeah. there you go the square peg is generally (laughs) I'd say heritage though yeah (laughs) it's a cool and it's yeah there's a bus stop right outside big canopy you know it's all it's very nice for Weatherspoons you know the, the price of the drinks are so cheap it's always busy, and it's kind of that nice busy. Yeah. Uh, you know, you want a Weatherspoons mm-hmm. to be busy, you don't want it to be empty. Well, uh, in my opinion. Have you ever played, though? Have you played the Weatherspoons game? 
Well, I have not played the Weatherspoons yeah, games. So. So there's this, um, heard, there's this Facebook group, like big page that yeah. loads and loads of people are on, and you'll sit, find your table in Weatherspoons. You post a photo of yourself mm. and whoever you're with on the table, and you post a table number around oh, the place yeah. around, and then you know all the hundred thousand people over on this group will just buy you drinks. Yeah, so you have to do whenever yeah. they the drinks. Buy, so they uh, buy yeah, a glass yeah, of milk. Not necessarily, but it's, oh, it's more um, just everyone buys each other drinks. So if you if you go out, you know someone might buy you. You know, a full English breakfast. Or, That's quite cute. You know, it means you can just turn up and you might have, you know, you might have a few pints. You might, you might get nothing, but mm. I see it on the the game. Instagram stories. Like people will post there. Like, yeah, I see it on Snapchat and Instagram yeah. and Twitter. Yeah. You just get a picture of the every, table. Every now and then, I'll send someone a bowl of chips or. I, I generally might like actually, actually like a bowl of chips at the right moment. Oh, that yeah. would make my night. If someone sends me a table number, I see it. It's always. <laughs> um, uh, raspberry tequila no raspberry sambu- sambuca that's, that's what I always yeah, send right. it's always three for a fiver so I think you know what I'm just going to send yeah. that you know and then I get them to send a video so <laughs> enjoy enjoy that oh, I remember um, when I first turned 18 and I went to Worth Spoons and mm. me and all my mates back at home we realised that you could send different things to tables mm. and my mates one of them was at home and he just kept sending peas to our table. <laughs> peas? Yeah, just you can just buy a plate of peas for about a pound yeah. or 50p or something. They will yeah. stop at some point though. Yeah. They do, they no, do yeah. online once they kind of clock on. There is a rule. They're not buying bowls and bowls of peas. But this, this mate would just keep sending us bowls of peas <laughs> but none of them turned up because they realised very quickly after... Mm-hmm. Like the, How many the, did he order? The waiter turned the table and he was like, oh, guys, why have you ordered five plates of peas? Like, you're not going to order anything else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, nothing else. This is how my life's going. And then we told our, um, I think we told our mate to stop because he's just wasting his money. And then... <laughs> about, they're still charging him, right? They still, yeah, they still yeah. charge him. But they're not going to waste that food, obviously. And then about ten minutes later, just a single plate with one fried egg turns up. <laughs> because he'd always started, he changed it to just fried eggs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I'm going to bear that one in mind. But then after that one, I think they stopped again, and he just ended up, you know, realizing just that spent yeah, spent ten pounds. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Weatherspoons is full of laughs. See, there's that Weatherspoons, the square peg. But if you're looking for a bit more of a uh, a different vibe on a Weatherspoons, there's the Sun on the Hill, which is about Come another on. ten minutes walk. What's that? The Sun on the Hill. It's um, it's part of a hotel actually. So Weatherspoons part of a hotel, and I go there. When I, I want, I want a drink. I want a cheap drink, but it's a bit more quieter mm. in the evenings. Yeah. Still busy, don't get me wrong, but mm. it's not too like the square peggers can get very hectic on a on a Tuesday or Thursday night or something. <laughs> there's um there's a really good weather spoon actually by the cathedral. It's called um it's called the Briar Rose. Oh and yeah, sorry, no, that's the one I'm on about. Not the Is sun it? on no. the hill. The sun on the hill is another one. It's the Briar Rose. Sorry, I was going to say because it's it's really fancy. Cause it's the where hotel, all the um, yeah, yeah cause it's where all the My business bad. people um. They all they all go through on their way back after their work, like towards the train station, and it's got a really nice bar. But yeah, it's still cheap drinks because it's weather spoons. Where's Rose? It's um between New Street Station and the Cathedral. It's halfway sort of between that and one of those side roads. Oh, okay. I don't know. Uh, Twenty five Bennett's Hill. There you go. Does the address if uh, anyone wants it? They sell on GPS in weather <laughs> I mean, if you just go onto the app anyway, they all just all the yeah, weather spoons. Yeah, yeah. It tells you where they are, and it will just tell you where your nearest one is. And yeah, see, the Briar Rose is the Weatherspoons. The Sun on the Hill is the next door pub. Uh, Sorry, that's my bad, my mistake. So yeah, the Briar Rose, <laughs> very nice Weatherspoons to go to. Um, moving on, are we now? When when most people think of Birmingham, one of the first things I think of is the boring, yeah, the massive shopping centre that everyone knows, where everyone comes to. To, you know, mm-hmm. even a lot of people at school would go and they'd get the train to Birmingham just to go to the ball ring. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which now I live here, I couldn't even imagine. No, you don't. You don't really go when you live here, but I, I, I do. I sort do of like uh, that's where I go. If I'm feeling a bit down, but I know I'm broke, I'll just sort of I'll window shop in ball ring. Nice. Yeah. You right. just walk into Selfridges and just walk around all the Literally, aisles. Literally, it's at the... just quite a nice place. I, I'm, quite, I'm, I'm a fan. I like boring. See all the t-shirts for two hundred pounds and. Oh, literally! I walked into um. Oh, I think. What is it? It's not House of Fraser. Is it? You know, the massive shopping centre. On the walk towards. Yeah, on on Corporation Street. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's a massive House of Fraser. Is it House of Fraser? Yeah. I went in there. I was looking. I literally like buy a pair of pants for like 
150 quid. Nice. <laughs> I walked straight out again. I was like, I'm in the wrong place. House of <laughs> Fraser is very... You can find some good deals there because they're always you having random do. sales. I, I, I bought some really expensive t-shirts for yeah. like a considerably uh, cheaper price. So yeah, House of Fraser's on the way to Corporation. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty big place. Um, but the nothing will beat the ball ring. I've been coming here since I was 16. When, mm-hmm. cause I'm, I, obviously, I'm only Coventry, half an hour away. Mm. Train... Just come to the boring for a day, and yeah, it's. I think a lot of people have. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's got most shops that you wouldn't find anywhere else apart from here or London or <laughs> Manchester, maybe. Yeah. So people will come for those shops. It's so close to Aston as well, like because obviously we're not Aston. Uh, sorry, Aston Uni. We're not in Aston. Mm. Um, so yeah, what what fifteen minute walk at most? Yeah. Ten minutes. And then if, you, if you're getting the train somewhere as well, the train to or from New Street Station to the Bull Ring is less than five minutes as well. Yeah. So everything's every that's the thing the thing about Aston Uni, everything's so close together. You can um Oh you get it to Moore Street, don't you? If you want Oh yeah, to. you can go there. But everything's so close yeah. together, it's um so convenient, you know, you can pretty much go everywhere you needed to go in the day in an hour. That's, that, that differentiates Birmingham to London. It, we've got a lot of stuff here, but because it's all in pro- uh, mm. proximity, it makes a much bigger difference. Because, you know, when you, you travel around central London... Oh, yeah. And oh. it's huge. You it's can't, massive. Like, yeah, it's, you can't get anything. You're on you, one you, side you get, or on another side <laughs> yeah, of London. Yeah. You get one thing done within an hour no, after right. you account all the walking and weaving. Mm-hmm. Birmingham, on the other hand, you could literally ping from, I don't know, Zara to Nando's... Uh, have some lunch through all the shops in the ball ring mm. back out into the new street oh well into Grand Central Station and then uh, back on your train on wherever you've come from yeah. or walk back up to the unis well you, you could literally have a day trip to uni almost and then yeah. you could still make it you could still do shopping you could mm-hmm. still go for a food shop if you wanted to that's basically what we do parents come up and yeah. <laughs> Right, go and go walk Amber Ring, do do a shop, and oh, go go yeah, eat something. Yeah, yeah. Then you can go home. <laughs> it's, all, it's all there. It's all it's, it's all in about ten minute window. Freshers will always find that shopping trip with the uh, with the Ooh, family, yes. where you have to where they don't want to leave. I don't know. That was a common one. Eh? You know, they they're like it's like, they've come to drop you off, mm. and you end up doing this, that, and the other. Oh uh, well, yeah, you like, spend the day with your parents. Going, re- I'm ready to be alone now. <laughs> Just, uh, no, but yeah, not. I did enjoy that last proper nice restaurant meal that we went Ooh, for. Yeah. What's your default parents paying for? Oh, it va- mine varies. Is that true? Yeah, what's yours? Oh, my mother's every time. Every damn really? time. Yeah. Like, on the. I don't know. I'll drift occasionally, but my mother's the one. That I tend to go. That's all. See, that's I've all I've still never been to Wagamama's. What? Oh, oh my god! Just another big. Go to Wagamama's. It's so good. So I always, even if I think about going, I'll sort of walk in that direction, and then I'll see Nando's, and then I'll just turn off and go to Nando's instead. I. But it happens every time. I'm not a fan of Nando's. Really? What? Just what? Just because I think it's very overrated for what it is. I don't price what it is because I can make chicken at home. I oh, cannot believe true. you just said that. I can but use I Nando's know. spices and sauce. Yeah, but there's just something about going to Nando's, you know, sitting there it's having so your quick, food. So easy. Yeah, it's generally pretty it's quick. Such good food. If you're looking for price, quick, okay, Mackey's. Uh, um, I'd say, do you know what? <laughs> I've always said really this well. to a lot of my friends <laughs> that Nando's is that in between from a fast food restaurant. To a normal sit-down restaurant, I'd feel like it's yeah, a very good in between. Yeah, but either one. No, I like it. It's quick, but it's not too expensive. But it's a like it's not cheap. Um, exactly. it's the not quality cheap. of the food's good, and it's not terrible. But it's not crazy amazing that it has to be expensive. I just feel like it's a good go between. But then, if you want to still sit down, you know, you can order beer and wine and you know you can have you can have starters you can mains, take, yeah. desserts. you can take guests up to like oh, I've been with 10, 10 people on a big table as a, like a school leavers thing or mm. you know an end of the year uni thing but yeah I, I feel like Nando's is that mainstream go between mm. my family one I'd say you know we go ZZ's um, if it's in Birmingham I feel like that's quite a good go between one time one of my parents came up I took them to Digbeth Dining Club 
Oh, how did that go? I've still not been. Been hot. So it's been two years. Here. I haven't been. I've been. I've been there while yeah. it's happening. <laughs> I've never been to eat. <laughs> I don't spend money and do. <laughs> yeah. So in, in so Digbeth Dining Club is it's a few clubs in Digbeth, but during the day they open all their rooms up and they have live sort of vinyl music or DJs that are playing and they have all these street food carts like set up around and you can pretty much go around and just mm. order whatever you want and you could have you know fried chicken to. You know, a Greek kebab or anything. So Greek kebab. I don't know what yeah, dumplings, anything as the dessert, like Such milkshakes. A yeah, all the bars are open as well, so you can order any drinks you want. And then there's a record shop upstairs. It is, it is pricey, but then you know, you wouldn't go there just because. I don't know what I'm saying now. <laughs> um, <laughs> you wouldn't go there every week. Uh, well, yeah, you wouldn't. That. You wouldn't go there every week, Ooh. but when you do go there, it's one to remember. Yeah, it's yeah. Digbeth Dining Club is something that though you have to that you have to be ready for. Like you go like it's a day not a day out, but it's a few hours out, isn't it? Yeah. It's not far away. It's a, like you said, it's a bit more expensive. Although you could easily spend the day there because it is pretty it is, much yeah. like um like a pub, but you've just got live live vinyl DJs. So you could sit there just eating street food with your yeah. mates. If you yeah, if you enjoy that, it's definitely somewhere to hit up. Mm. I feel though that you do a lot of the stuff we mentioned first at uni like Broad Street or it depends what side you pick you go Broad Street or uh, Underground Music and Digbeth and that um, or, and then you can go Gosser and Weatherspoons but I feel like after a certain amount of time you kind of get bored of um, the same kind of, of stuff sa- yeah, yeah. It, it becomes repetitive as such so going to somewhere like Digbeth Tiny Club not often is actually quite yeah. a nice change mm. as such well, no, recently in Digbeth, they've, there's loads of different alternative sort of venues been opened up. So there's a place you can now go, you can go curling. Yes, yeah. I've seen that like curling with drinks, yeah. Yeah, there's, um, there's a new video game uh, bar in Custer Factory. Ah, we yeah. walked past that, didn't we, I yeah, think, that day. Yeah. That was really good, I really want to go. Ghetto Golf, very common. <laughs> that, knows. Yeah, that's, that's the standard. If, yeah, if you come to Birmingham, yeah, everyone ghetto. knows about that, yeah. yeah. I've been once, like, it's okay. It's good, you know, yeah. the drinks are nice, it's very expensive, it but is. it's, again, one of them things that you do, and you yeah. don't do it often. Iconic though, It's a, yeah. a uni bucket list. Mm. Yeah, 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 the, these are, yeah, these are things that belong on your bucket list. Mm. Yeah, you yeah. go two or three times. Get those goals, Digbeth Dining Club. Um. Digbeth Dining Club, I feel, is one you can hit up, I don't know, once a month, once every two months, because of the variety that's there. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the thing as well, because every week different food stands it, will turn yeah, up, so you can changes. have different food every time if oh, you wanted to. Uh, Apparently, they've got over 100 different like, people that can, yeah, that can turn up. Mm-hmm. And so every time I've been, there's always been different people there. And to be fair, Dig Dying Club, I think, I think the people who run it is not just Dig but Dining Club, it's like Dining Clubs all around. Yeah, they they have them around Coventry yeah. in Coventry, mm. um, in the in the city centre. But yeah, it's a really good. They've got a really good thing going, mm. um, and yeah, it just creates an experience for everyone. Yeah, it's to experience something, new things. Something you you wouldn't see normally, just on a day to day basis. Yeah, yeah. Mm. When I first came to uni, one thing I um I really struggled with was working out how much money I had to spend each week and none. You have none. Yeah, because. As a student, you know, you've got your student loan, you might have a part-time job, but apart from that, you know, you need you need to budget mm. quite well. You spend a lot on nights out. Oh, especially those Especially if you, if you drink. <laughs> the first ones, because before you realise that you need to just take cash, you can't go out like, oh, it's the first week of uni, I'm just going to spend <laughs> all of my money yeah, I think before everyone, I have a part-time job. I think everyone judges that wrong. That freshers yeah. week oh, is God, a hard. money pit. You know, you bought a wristband, <laughs> you yeah. probably you got loads of money sunk into that. No, oh, new fat mates. Oh, I draw shots. No, don't do that. Well, that. That's the thing because as you um, when you first start uni, you just want to make as many friends as you can. Mm-hmm. So you all just go to every event that you see yeah. just to meet new people and you know mm-hmm. make new friends. That yeah, you know yeah. you'll if you the people you meet in first week are pretty much you'll know them again for the next three years. Like you'll see them around campus every day. And all stuck with. <laughs> well, yeah, so some of them you might um, form a full-on relationship will, with, like you become yeah. very close friends. Others you might just, well, they're mutual then, aren't they? You just mm. end up knowing them 
and saying hi. It's just good to know people though on it's campus. That freshers week, that fr- no, well, that <laughs> freshers week uh, friends making does help a lot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. One of one of my mates I met, I actually met him in the Weatherspoons on Broad Street on the first night no. or the second night of uni, and I only saw it. I only went up to speak to him because he was wearing an Aston Uni T-shirt, and I didn't really know anyone else, so I said hello. And, <laughs> It was this really like to um, I don't think you know him, no. 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 I won't say his name, but I think he's listening. <laughs> Protect his identity. Yeah. To, the, uh, to the many listeners of this podcast. Yes. But yeah, uh, it, was just, it was just me and my flat. We went to, um, went to the Weatherspoons and then yeah. we just saw like another group of students that looked like they'd just met each other. Uh, walked in and we went to chat to them because yeah. that's just what you do, really. And then I think it's, 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 it makes it kind of an issue if you don't have freshers. Like if you don't, if you're not around fresh, if you arrive yeah. a week late, like international students, maybe. Yeah. If you arrive a week late, you're kind of screwed for a little bit, because the freshers just like accelerates. Mm. Freshers is one of them. Thing. Yeah, it's one of them things where you can make friends mm. quickly, but then you know, you, like if you miss it. There's no, not really anywhere else to sit yeah, down and introduce not. yourself unless you start going to nights out, but then how are you meant to know about them because well, you didn't nice. get to Well, I, yeah. I'm a fan of the whole... Well, yeah, there's a lot of non-night sort of <laughs> non night out, non-drinking mm. ways that you can meet people, like societies or clubs or... Yeah. Like I'm in the snow, the snow club, like the skiing place. Mm. I'm in the DJ society, I'm in the cocktail society. Mm. Last year I was in the tea society. I can't yeah, how was, coffee society. I've been seeing their Instagram posts. How was the tea society? That's so every, every Wednesday we would go to the Boston Tea Party, oh, and absolutely. we would um you go and order your good different teas, and then we just chat with new people and I don't know. Some one week you do a quiz, one week I don't know you make gingerbread houses. What in the yeah just in the in Boston tea. in Boston Tea Party. Oh, wicked. It's an adorable society. Like you know, well, I'd do that every yeah. week. <laughs> we had a we had a society discount, so you'd be you know two pounds for your cup of tea, mm. and then you just sit there and you know do a quiz, or and then the winner of the quiz wins a, um, a bar of chocolate. Oh, That's nice! Quite cute, isn't it? You know, there you go. <laughs> very relaxing. Good way to meet new people. Mm. Good way to chill out. Yeah, it's so relaxing. I do that with us. Tea, <laughs> tea is one of them things. Like coffee is more of like obviously the energy increaser. You know, tea is one of them ones where you relax and, well, for me it is. Yeah, I, don't know. I, know, I, well, I know a lot of people who are like, oh, no, there's enough caffeine in tea. To... Yeah. <laughs> no, I need four espressos and then I'll be okay. But yeah, the Coffee Society looks very interesting. Yeah, I've seen, I, like you said, I've yeah, seen their Instagram. I get very bougie with coffee. Like, if there's, a, if there's a way to make coffee, I have it and do it often. <laughs> like, nice. Yeah. Well, I know. Um, I know now. The SU's also started their weekly quiz nights, so they're mm. a good way to meet people. You know, create a quiz team with some people. You yes, know, if you win, you can win big prizes. Yeah. You know, cash prizes, um, drinks from the bar. You know, food from the bar. And they're busy. Like it's nice to have a quiz night that's it's very warm and full of people. Yeah, I didn't realize how busy it was until quite recently. But yeah, when well, we you came the other week, and it was just like, whoa, this is quiz that's, night. <laughs> and all the tables are full. Everyone's. Yeah, like you can't. Quiz, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a full-on thing. There's a dog. There was. <laughs> yeah, this dog has a little like retriever. I was like, oh. The SU is a really good place to be. Mm. It's actually become a very good hub in yeah. all times of the year. I yeah. I end up coming in here. Mm. Like now we've we've had it for half a term in second year and the first term in uh, well half the term in first year and yeah. the second term uh, the first term in second year. Sorry, and um, yeah, it's just been brilliant all year round. Yeah, the summer, it's great to be here, you know, if you want to drink yeah. or you want to sit down, you got do some the, work, have the balcony. Yeah, you've got the shop, you've got the, the coffee the coffee shop, you've got the bar, so you can just... That's basically, you've got the buckets of beers, which is the main <laughs> attraction, I think, possibly. So, you know, during the day, most people will just be having food, um, revising the or doing great. work. And it's cheap. Yeah, because yeah, it's a student union, everything's cheap, mm-hmm. everything's sort of aimed at students. Student so. friendly, I guess, isn't it? yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good place. It's probably one of the uh, one of the good things I've found at this uni. Yeah, that's the thing that with, with unis a lot of, lot a lot of the time the student union either makes or breaks the uni experience. So yes, you know, if you take part in all the clubs, you know you'll meet people there that again like oh, on Freshers Week you'll meet the people you meet and sort of the clubs and the stuff you join really mm. not separate. You yeah, know, just just going to lectures or you know, making the most out of your time. 
Yeah. Do you know, if we never joined DJ Society, we'd never be doing this podcast. For well, example. There you go, yeah. If we never joined the DJ Society, we would have had a lot more free time. <laughs> My God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But again, societies are oh, great. We've met so many people in DJ Society. Oh, yeah. Like, I wouldn't have thought of being friends with half these people and you know it's great because you you meet people who do different things like run events as we know mm. and yeah they're really good people with like similar interests which is always yeah. nice like, you always got something to talk about definitely the D- yeah DJ society uh, brings a lot of people to together about with. and even people that are interested in DJing but don't DJ yeah get a huge like boost in terms of meeting real like proper DJs yeah, yeah. and people have been DJing and know yeah, so many people will just come because they want to learn a new skill and then mm. you know when they've finished uni they can say oh yes I got my degree but also now I can DJ and now I can yeah, yeah I learned that in uni and that's a big thing because like I think everyone makes a big thing out of making the most of your university experience but until you get to university you don't quite realise what you're going to do so you don't know what that university experience is. You don't know what the university is so, going to be. You know you're going to learn some stuff, hmm. which is like the default for university. But there's once you get here, you realise so it's much other social, stuff going on. Yeah. The social is a big mm. part of uni. Well, there's over a hundred different clubs and societies that you could join. So that's a hundred yeah. different groups of people that you could meet. Exactly. It varies slight from DJing to sports to uh, snow. Yeah, to tea, to Marvel, to whatever. Yeah, it's, there's so much going on. There's even like a Harry Potter society and a Monopoly Rubik's society Cube. and a, a Rubik's Cube society. Yeah, that's a new one this year. Cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it, it covers all bases. Mm. Because everyone has interests and there's so many people here that have them similar interests to you. you. You're surprised of how many people actually there are who take interest in the same things as you. Even like, if it was just what you're studying. So I'm in Psychsoc and do psychology. It's just another way to, I don't know, meet people who are interested in the same things as you. Yeah, because all the, a lot of the degree courses they'll have their own societies as well, so then you can meet people and, learn. you know, yeah, you can learn off others. So if you've missed something in a lecture, you can just ask people that you know in the society, and then they're more probably they're more likely to help you. Yeah, I think making friends on your course is actually quite a difficult thing because. You know, you go to lectures, you're usually they're a couple of minutes early and then it starts and then you're in silence mm. for well, a period of one or two well, yeah, or three Yeah, because a lecture's not a social, it's more of just... A, a seminar, head, yeah. yeah, a I seminar. Know, the first few weeks, it's basically a social. Like, Where yeah. the first the first week, everyone will just be getting to know each other and yeah, the yeah. lectures will just say, you know, welcome, here are your course mates. But it's not, yeah, lectures aren't really a social time, but then when you have that society that is a part of yeah. your course then it just allows you to make friends and yeah mm. ultimately gain that help and experience that you want when you um like when going back to budgeting when how do you how do you do like your food shop or like how do you plan how much you're going to spend on going out or food or drinks or going to the pub or other activities like dig a dining club or so it splits up, obviously, you know, I work every week, you know, you, you get that amount of money, amount X, should we call it? And then, well, I shop at Tesco, which is probably not the best of the budgeting ideas, but, you know, I bring things from it's home. Terrible. No, it's not terrible, but it's not Did cheap. you pick Tesco? No, I'm on about Express on campus. Oh, what? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very Christ. expensive. <laughs> but, you know, I bring things from home. I'll have my general... The best thing to do is to get your parents to bulk get a load of stuff. Yeah. You know, pasta, Definitely. tins, cans, spices, sauces, all the fridge stuff and whatever your weekly things are, vegetables, meats, you can get that from Tesco at a relatively decent price. Yeah, I'd say you could do a weekly shop in 20 quid there mm. for all your general stuff and have a lot to eat. And you know, there's always offers. Um, and then, you know, you collaborate with the with going to the pound shop on Corporation Street, which is a five, te- five ten at most minute walk, mm. and that's where I get all my other bits and bobs that you need. And from I'd say from them two, I'm pretty much covered. Balance out. Yeah, you balance out when you need. Mm. You know, even things you, you have to think about everything. Toothpaste, mm. Tesco, two pound fifty maybe. That's a guess. Pound shop is a pound. You know, you'd rather just go for a five minute walk and yeah. get all that stuff from there, and, and then save yourself come back spare here. money. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, 
B and M. Oh, brilliant. You, you know what? You want cereal. Whole section you, B&M. Yeah, you want <laughs> cereal in bulk, you go to B and M. Oh yeah. Juice, powder, anything. <laughs> anything well. Yeah. You, you go to B and M. And that's like that's what I mean though. You get your parents to help you out with things like that. Mm. Things that don't perish as quickly. That's how you begin to budget for a food food shop, I'd yeah. say. Because you get your main stuff in as cheap as you possibly can. You spend money on the other things. In terms of nights out it's just you know I used to in first year I used to go out two to three times a week uh, that's just a money just pit so if I'm honest yeah that it's a big big it's a very big money pit and mm-hmm. I never really budgeted for that nope. I just took cash out instead of my card I budgeting itself yeah I, okay I never got Apple Pay and I still don't because no, I feel like after like after a few drinks it's very, very, very easy to get your phone out. Oh, you get so confident with money. You're like, oh, it's, it'll be fine. I'm getting paid next week. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't. It goes very wrong Such after that. Such a mistake. Yeah. Um, the best thing to do is have a few, a few bank accounts. Have one for your card. Uh, I have one for you know, one for one thing. Another one <laughs> for rent. You know, your student uh, loan. Uh, you got. Uh, I think you got to balance uh, how you're spending money. And you know, there's a lot of things on banking apps that let you spend. Uh, put a limit on your card payments, mm. you know, 20, 30 pounds a day. Or, uh, Have you even got Monzo? No. I, I, yeah. I really want to learn about it. I don't, I don't have it. I don't really know much about oh, it. But so, I've seen yeah. everyone has it. No, yeah, yeah most people A lot do. of my friends have it. It just splits up. It shows all your expenses and it's brilliant. It's great, you know. It shows any bank account shows all your expenses. As in into, I think it sections them up. <laughs> Uh, into like okay. food or drink or oh, rent right. or like if, if, you, if you went to Tesco and spent five pounds, it would mm. come up and say food and drink five pounds and add it to that part of the budget. So then each oh, month right. you can see That's you spent, you know, you spent a hundred pounds or whatever on yeah. this in a month, and then oh, fair enough. That lets you learn about yourself as well. That's it's a big thing when you budget at uni. You learn about yourself and what you really need. Some brutal truths. Yeah, about you know, you think, am I going to buy? That ten pack of chocolate for two pounds, yes. or am I going to get the week worth of cereal for two pounds? Do you know what I mean? You're going to think the dilemmas that students face. Well, no, it's a genuine. It's a first. It's, I'd say yeah. that falls into first world problems. Mm. It's like you know, you, you're at uni, you've got here, you're spending X amount on whatever the yearly fee is. Yeah. You have got your rent to think about. Mm. You know, if you get a strict allowance from your parents, or you get a wage that you live off. Mm. You gotta use it wisely. Or do both. Or do both. Yeah. See, one thing I do is um, so I go to Aldi to shop, mm-hmm. and um, oh, this is probably what not what most people do, but I get the train <laughs> to go to Aldi. <laughs> Very so, nice. So let's just let's just locate different Aldis, right? So one Aldi is what twenty five minute walk. There's a bus. You can get a bus to that one. Uber. Yeah, as well. Or an Uber. Yeah. Uber, is... Uber. You get four together. Uber there. Two pound fifty each like, one. Yeah, literally. Most. Whereas I prefer to um, get a two pound return train journey to Aldi <laughs> in the suburbs of Birmingham. And, uh, <laughs> Where is it? It's a good. I've, I've walked there once before, and it took me over an hour to walk there. Oh my right. And um, <laughs> oh man, I'll go there. I'll do my big food shop, and then I'll. How, how big? I've got, I'm really keen now to know. I'm oh, wanting all the first. listeners. Yeah. <laughs> How big is this shot to be dressed this is daily? This is his <laughs> daily routine. So, because I'd want to spread out the cost of train ticket as well, even though it's only two pounds. But I, well, I think one point in first year, I managed to go every three weeks and do one huge shop. Oh wow, that's quite impressive. Three right? weeks. But then I would be coming back through the city centre with like my uni bag full of stuff, and then the two huge like whole halls just full of pastas like salad I think it's just but some rice you know sauces what? yeah rice I think it's going to last <laughs> like three, three weeks. weeks is a very very yeah. good I would still I would still go to the local Tesco to buy things like bread and you know cheese and milk milk and yeah. things like that but then all the other stuff so like three food. weeks it means a week topped up three times well topped up with bread and milk three times but mm. but you have to do that I guess don't you that's just a part of Perishable goods. Yeah, I, d- I don't know why I do it. I sometimes, you know, if, if I'm bored, the train journey. Just for the controversy, yeah. really. Yeah. Who can say, yeah, I get the train to do Aldi? Yeah, yeah, who can say they do the <laughs> weekly shop by train? Yeah, that's quite I mean, like. It's interesting. I, I guess it probably, I don't know, in would it use, is, is it less, is it more eco friendly than taking a bus or an Uber? <laughs> that was probably, the wrong yeah. thing going through his mind. You <laughs> know, that's, <laughs> that's the first thing no, that I thought of. Emissions? 
Yeah, no, that's going to cost too much. Are you very environmentally friendly? Although by I am, yeah. Although by getting the train, I do save a lot of money on my weekly food shop. No, yeah, hundred mm. percent. That because going to the Aldi is it saves me so much money. I can imagine. Yeah. And then you spend it on things like DJing, which is... Uh, yeah, yeah, then you spend it on music. Or I'll spend, it, I'll spend it in the SU. Or, or in the mm-hmm. SU, yeah. No, but you'd rather do that. You'd rather budget, yeah, yeah. get all your shopping done, and then have that money left over, rather than the other way around would be not budget, <laughs> yeah. mess up your finances and... Uh, overdraft. So can't, yeah, overdraft well, yeah. ultimately, you'd be sitting here like, oh, all my friends are at the SU. Yeah. But I haven't got anything I to do. Afford. I just sit in my flat and... Mm. What? Budget and don't waste, I think, is my two biggest things at uni. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I would never buy a large loaf of bread um, and only have it for... Th- like, if I know I'm going away on a weekend or I'm going away mm. until Monday and I buy it on Thursday, mm. well, that would just be a silly move because, you know... Well, generally, bread goes off in, I don't know, four to five yeah. days. Oh, well, I was in MS, right? I was in MS <laughs> oh, fancy. yesterday. I know. I was, so I was... Actually, I was shopping for... My grandma, who requested that I get her some Seville oranges. Right. So, Seville oranges, I've Googled it, okay, not like normal oranges. They're like, they're almost like lemons. So, they're a very specific type of orange. Does she know you're a uni student, though? She does. Um, but she actually she, she paid me back when I got there. I was like, it's fine, but yeah. Um, but I couldn't find Seville oranges, but I went to MS because I was like, that's the only place that's going to have them. That will wait for those oranges. Those oranges. Um, but then I didn't find spilled oranges, but I did find bread that, like, vacuum-packed bread that lasts for months. Wow, really? I, I didn't know. know that was a thing. So it's, I did know the thing, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So I found it on S. It's a pound for, like, six little ones or two big baguettes that you just stick in the oven for ten minutes and they're done. But they'll, they'll last in that vacuum pack for, like, two months. So once you open that vacuum pack, once you open it, it's like but you two normal weeks away. But you could keep them yeah. for months. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah, if they sell that, imagine going there, mm. buying four of them for a pound. I could do my weekly shop and do it every four weeks. I know Waitrose does them individually, so you could get like you get like a pack of two, but they're individually sealed, so you could use mm. one and then you yeah. have an open one. Well, there you go. Oh. There's your problem solved to not waste bread. Guys. <laughs> work around there. But yeah, just don't, if you're budgeting, I'd say, just don't, try not to waste. Mm. I hate the food wastage it stuff. Adding, things, isn't it? Yeah, like, you just got to use your brain a little bit. You're, at, you're a uni yeah. student, you, you know, you've got this far. Now just uh, think Although, wisely. That is the other argument, says risk the waste and go to Bowie Market. Oh yeah, so I started going to the markets yeah. this year. Ah, really? Yes, they're, they're right by the ball ring. Yeah. They have I all these them, yeah. small... Stands that will sell fruit and veg, you know, meats and fish, and all this frozen stuff. It's like everything. Mm. It's and a market. You can pretty much find, yeah, you know, if you wanted a live lobster, for example, you could probably buy one. Sheep's head, eyes and all. Yep. Really? They're in there. Yeah. yeah. How often do you guys go to the market? I've never been. Oh, it's the last year I went like all the time. This way, I've gone. I've gone bad. I've gone Tesco more now. It's not great. But I find a lot of stuff like different cheeses and things mm. you can buy at the market for literally half the price of a supermarket. And it's really? still the same. Wow. I'll even, sometimes I'll find the same brands as well. But with the risk of wastage, so they do like fruit and veg as one pound bowls. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's yeah. how yeah, most markets But like if you buy a bowl of onions, <laughs> it's like a mixing bowl of onions. Yeah. It's a quid, so it's less it's than plastic. buying two onions in Tesco. Mm. But you get like 20 what are you going to do with 20 onions? Well, you blitz them and uh, you make a sauce, I guess. I think that's it. Yeah, but, yeah, but like, <laughs> no, yeah, no, you just obviously... Just sauce. No, uh, yeah, but there's, you just end up getting... Because then you want to get... I don't know, say you want to make a bolognese. Yeah. And you're going to want some onions, some tomatoes, maybe some peppers. But once you get all that, it's not the right ratio. So you'll use some onions, so you use most peppers, maybe most tomatoes, but you still end up with... Waste loads of like yeah waste stuff. So like you used to give flatmates. Yeah, I think the combat against that is if you're living with people that you yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, fair. You know, <laughs> you can share the food. And, yeah. Well, no, that's what we if did. I lived. Yeah. <laughs> so free flatmates. It's not going but No, yeah, I lived in first year. I lived with my mates, so mm. that was perfect. There was five of us. Second and, year, however. Uh, no, that was, yeah. In first year, it was it was great. Um, mm. Second year, I lived with one of my friends and two two other girls that we made friends with, and yeah. it's fine. Like. 
if you have something extra like that, you literally just put it in the group chat. Hi yeah, guys, take sure. it out the fridge. I'm not going to have it. Mm-hmm. And it works. People will, because at the end of the day, it's hard to say no to food when you're at UD. Oh, and everyone wants to be like, quite most friendly and... I think, yeah, our generation is one of the ones that has a bigger change. And it's, I think it's only going to get bigger in terms mm. of taking a bit more care in the environment. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm pretty... Yeah, I started this conversation on no waste. You know, it's pretty... It's pretty important that you consider things like that when you're at uni. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it impacts our future. Well, I guess not, not even from the environmental like, perspective as well. Point of view. Yeah, well, mainly you're thinking about your finances. <coughs> mm. But also, you know, if you've got five, six people living in a flat, then you're wasting all this food. You know, it fills up the bins very quickly and people get annoyed at you as well. Yeah, you know, cleaners get annoyed with you and that in itself is just not nice. <laughs> I tell everyone now listening, you do not want to be told off by a cleaner when you're hungover in the morning. Oh, what did you do? <laughs> Busy. Well, we had the cleaner turn up. We didn't know she was coming that day and we had um, a little bit of a priest drinks. Oh, God. And maybe, well, an empty bottle of Smirnoff was smashed all over the floor and oh, no. a few spillages over the kitchen. Mm. It wasn't nice. She wasn't happy. <laughs> just knock on your door every morning. And like, well, no, What's unfortunately, I was very, very tired. Yeah. It was like 10 a.m. and we'd got back at like, well, we didn't sleep at like 7. Uh, um, I was going in the kitchen to get some water. I walk Same. in and I turned around with my eyes half open and you got the cleaner there like what is this? Literally. <laughs> what, what is it? What, what have you done? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just one of those fun uni stories that, you know, you can deal with. But yeah, I just don't recommend it. No. Keep the flat clean, people. <laughs> Personal hygiene is very important as we currently know. Especially with all the coronavirus talks and the I was, I was just thinking this whole budgeting thing seems to sound like um, a self-isolation technique. Yeah. <laughs> Tom's on about shopping for three to four weeks. <laughs> Does it? You much. just don't have bread or milk. You can just live off pasta well, and no, sauce. No. What you do, what you do, you buy the flour, the eggs, um, okay, the flour and the I don't yeast. Get, right? Where the hell have these bakers been? Yeah. As soon as this happens, no flour anywhere. Where, who is just baking who is bread? Baking bread? <laughs> Nothing else. It's like, like the, thing the bread's flour. there. The flour is not. <laughs> the thing with flour is you buy it in like a kg bag. Yeah. Now a kg of flour gives you a, a lot of bread. Like Does it? I don't know. I feel like that would give you two to three loaves. I used to bake when I was as soon as the gun Small gun. loaves, not massive loaves, but you know, when you're baking you're only gonna you don't really bake a big loaf. At no. home because you've got your oven. <laughs> Just as soon as the government say, oh, everyone's to start self quarantining, suddenly all these people are like, right, time to catch Literally, up with my baking like, skills. Like, <laughs> oh, no, it's great. Inside, like, it's great. Out comes the bread oven. <laughs> bread. Oh, my mum did that. Mum did that. Bread, bread maker. <laughs> The bread maker's out. Yeah, yeah, she <laughs> nice. desperate times flour. called desperate times called Literally. desperate. But you know what? I cannot be like when you make a night when it, when oh, the recipe yeah. goes uh, good <laughs> in a bread oh, maker. A homemade homemade white bread. loaf with nuts. Brilliant. I don't think anything being be that. You know, it's cut to your whatever slice. But it's still warm. Yeah, oh. it's always soft. It's always very well. It's airy inside. It's yeah. a nice bread, and the smell in the house. Oh, it's yeah. something that you cannot beat. So if you're baking at uni, don't burn it. Just make sure you get it right, and you'll have a lovely oh, aromatic yeah, smell around that house. Oh, la- yeah, last year on my first year, we had um, one of my flatmates left a garlic bread in the oven, and then they <laughs> went to their room and um, forgot about it. And I turned, <laughs> I turned them in the kitchen, and there's literally just a black log of just burnt. Everything just smelled of garlic in the kitchen. And do you know what I think? I would say. I've known more people to burn garlic bread and pizza yeah. out of anything else. Oh, uh, no. Okay. I've burnt garlic bread. My flatmate did it last week. So I don't know how. First week, I was making a grilled cheese sandwich, right? <laughs> no. Grilled cheese sandwich. Just two bits of bread, some cheese on it, stick it in the grill for a bit. That ended with me trying to put out the fire. <laughs> That the grilled cheese was nice. It was, there was flames. How long did you leave this for? I that was the thing. It was not because I left it too too long. It's because it was like touching the grill bit. Ah. That I hadn't quite clocked on until someone went. 
It's not smoke. I hope no oven. And it's on fire. <laughs> it's, it's, I think most people at uni would have done this. It's when you open the oven and just a pile of smoke begins to come out. Yeah. And then you just close it again. <laughs> you don't know, want the, 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 the fire alarm. Yes. <laughs> the worst thing you don't, the major thing you don't want to do is set the fire Don't off be that with your person. Oven. Oh yeah. We, we evacuated at two uh, forty-five the other day. Um, in the morning. In the morning, because uh, someone set their fire alarm off. Don't be that person. Yeah, you really don't want. Even to be fair, even if you are, nobody other than your flatmates will know. Because like I, I never know who it is that set the fire alarm off, but your flatmates will know. They will know that you were the one that got them up. At, like yeah, whatever what, hour when you were cooking a midnight grilled cheese like. there you go but yeah garlic bread um, and bread in general just seems to be a mm. burner in the oven I've got, a bit of garlic bread controversy I've got, I've got something pizza. worse mm. it's, it's not burning but it's still like, ruining food so um, I've had it where a flatmates they've, they've gone to bought, they've gone to like buy a McDonald's or something and they've come back and they trip over the floor somehow what? no idea how you trip over the floor just, okay. just the, not, not even anything on the floor. It's just wet the, or no, not, not right. even wet floor. Just, just Get a carpet. Drunk. Yeah, and um, buy a Mackey the night. Yeah. They they trip over the floor, fall into the kitchen while I'm cooking my food. Mm. They're they are, I don't know they you know diet coke over falls <laughs> like spills everywhere. All the burgers and chips fall into no. the diet coke and everything oh. just soggy and ruined. <laughs> Now, Did they fall out of the box? box? That tastes bad. Yeah, everything just fell straight out of the box onto the floor. <laughs> it was full of Diet Coke. <laughs> oh, no. Damn. And then, you know, you've just wasted however, like, five, six pounds. I don't think it's the money in that situation. It's the... Uh, just it's the, the cleaning up after. The whole well, thing. Yeah. Like, you're not going to be able to eat it. Mm. You know, you've walked all that way. Oh, it all up. <laughs> There's oh, a lot more to dropping something on the floor like that. <laughs> I'd, yeah, I'd definitely prefer to burn a garlic bread over... <laughs> dropping a McDonald's on the floor. I've seen some bad drops. Uh, straight out the fridge. Oh yeah. Pots of pasta, curry, anything. Just that oh, drops yeah, out the fridge. Was, like last week, got all over white shoes. <laughs> straight like, on the floor. Suit. Okay, I've got I've got another funny story then. Yeah. So when, on one of my legendary Aldi trips, <laughs> I, um, my the bag was Infamous. so full. Oh no! And there was a jar of tikka sauce on the top of the bag. <laughs> no. I was like, you know, because the Aldi they scan it so quickly, and I'm just yeah. piling up and up. And yeah, yeah, you get that. I go to finally actually pack it into bags, and like I, could, I watch it like, falling in slow motion. This jar of tikka sauce <laughs> rolls off onto my foot and just smashes on the floor. My she yeah. just cut, like, my all my clothes stank of just chicken tea. I remember tea hearing about this. You heard about this? Yeah, I know this. So story. you're an Aldi. Yeah, I had to, and because I had to get I had to get the train back, and I walked through the city centre back for my stuff. Oh god! Stinking and like, literally my Damn. my jeans, my shoes are stained orange. <laughs> then walk into the flat. That'll teach you. Walk into the flat, and everyone's, everyone's there just laughing at me because <laughs> it's like I, I had to bin those shoes because it didn't come out in the wash. Really. Yeah. Out of all things, though, tikka sauce is what you yeah, do not. Yeah, it's the worst thing. Curry, no. Nope. What was yeah. what was worse as well is that then you know about like a week later, and then realised I had this rice in my cup, and I was like, oh, curry, and all the rice, and then realised I got nothing to add to the rice. Ah. So well, I, like, lost, lost my shoes, always. and then I just end up eating like rice, just plain rice <laughs> with veg. Maybe yeah, Something I don't know. I could, that's a rice. that's just a bad day for you there, Tom. <laughs> yeah. That's another problem in itself. We we just uh, having having a bad day. Everyone has them. Totally normal. Fall on the floor with your mackies and uh, yeah, I've spill a, your tikka sauce on your foot. On a day too good to go trip in like first month of uh, first year. Uh, do you want to explain what too good to go is? For oh, okay. So too good to go is a great money saving app. It like they. It allows you to buy what's left in a, sh- in a restaurant for like a much cheaper price a bit later. So my go-to is the O-Sushi. They'll give you like 10 quid's worth of sushi for three quid at nine o'clock. So, yeah, I've, I've, done wow. I've done it once yeah, before really actually yeah, with the O-Sushi. Yeah. And you go, and you, you know, I think the Did reason you go is- it? Yeah, yeah you, you go, so you walk to collect it, but then it's, you know, you're walking at sort of mm-hmm. eight, nine in the evening. So it's past like dinner time, yeah. which I guess is why you know, people, some people don't do it. Mm-hmm. And if you're a student, you know, 10 pounds worth of food for three quid. 
Always worth it. I feel like as a student, you can eat whenever. Yeah. It becomes, if you're know, living yeah. out, it becomes a thing to eat whenever you like. Mm. You can have your breakfast at six in the evening. Yeah, yeah if it's you, just want to wake up. If you really want, yeah. And then you can have your dinner at 5 a.m. the next morning. It is so odd. I'm I've eaten. How accurate this is. Well, no, is they're just very jumpy times. But I don't know. Me as DJing, mm. I have had wacky meals at oh, wacky yeah. times. I you know? really like meals that take way too much effort for the time that I'm making them. Yeah. Yes. Like pasta. Sometimes we'll. Uh, oh no no no! Pa- well, I mean, like when I get home at like oh, two a.m. Okay, right right right. And I'll make. I'll put the effort in. And then like an hour making yeah. food. Yes. But in my head, I'm like, I should go to sleep. I'm like, no, no, I'm going to craft this yeah. <laughs> That's very masterpiece. True. <laughs> Maybe a few drinks assist in that sometimes. Yeah, it could, it could have. No, no. Oh, when I'm drunk, I'm like, no, ordering, done. Oh, really? Yeah, can't do drunk cooking. <laughs> See, I am, um, in I first year again, I, I came back from a night out. And I came, went to the kitchen because I was going to put pizza on something. And my, my flatmate is just there, like three in the morning, just cooking prawns. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, I was this just is like, interesting. What? I was like, mate, what are you doing? And he's like, oh. like, I was doing a late night revision session and I came back from the library, realised I hadn't eaten anything all day somehow. So he decided just to cook a prawn, I don't know, like a fried prawn meal. Okay. Nice. At 3 a.m. And I come back into the kitchen and he's just there, you know, stir frying, like, these prawns, mm. literally, yeah, good, good. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, adding all the seasonings, all the you toss it in the in a wok or something, don't you? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did have a wok as well. Just nice. Good, that's it, yeah. That's what I like. A bit of wrist action. <laughs> but then I know, but even a wok. By the time he was finished, I was finished eating my pizza already. I was ready to go to bed, and he's still there. Oh yeah, frying these prawns. After your pizza? You know, yeah, well, my pizza was done in you know, 10, 15 minutes. So then he's, he's still finishing up his prawn. <laughs> Long time. And then by the time I've gone to bed, I can hear him still like, washing up all of his like 10 different pans. <laughs> and his... That is literally me. I, I feel that happens at uni, though. When you sit down to mm. cook, you, wo- you wash longer than you cook. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. It becomes a process. But I'd always come into the kitchen and people would just not want to wash up, so all the pans would be full of water. <laughs> on the side. On the side, yeah. <laughs> no, you leave it to soak and then you leave it to dry. Okay, they're never actually, they're never clean and washed. And then once they're dry, you dry. don't just <laughs> use them again. Well, the, yeah, you dry it as you use it. Right? <laughs> oh, I am terrible oh. for leaving dishes to dry. It's always that plate from dinner kind of, I'll oh, wash it, have breakfast with it, if you're having some toast or something. Yeah. And then lunch comes around. <laughs> oh, we'll just wash it and dry it and use it again. I, <laughs> then again. I only had. I came to uni with no plate actually. I came to uni with shot glasses. Nice. But no things to eat anything with. Oh. See, I have priorities. I, I brought. I brought a lot of stuff with me, like all the mm. plates and things. But then I brought brought two mugs as well, like drinking mugs. So. And then um, on the first day, like my parents are there, they're dropping all my stuff off. And they're like, oh, oh why don't we all sit down and have a cup of tea? Mm-hmm. And then there's like four of us sat there with well, no. two mugs, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because nice. I only have one plate. Like, I have one small plate and one sort of slightly larger dish thing. But that's it. Mm. Like, I was thinking, how many times are you going to make tea for four? Well, a life hack to that I'll give you is um, Costa cups. Yeah. A good life hack to actually um, making tea for a lot of people is actually Costa Cups. Tesco have a Costa machine, or even Costa the actual place. You know, if you need to make tea... Cups. Yeah, no, you can. I've used them for um, a no, pre-trip. No, 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 you can't, technically. Actually, you no, can't. well, you can't, but <laughs> yeah, we've we've don't, I'm sure if you ask... Don't just go in for ten cups. No, I wouldn't go for ten, I'd go for three at most. Do and you know what? Ask. Yeah, yeah, you can. Well, I've, I've kept all show. of my fresh as week cups that were given out mm. from all these different, uh, from yeah. the SU and from all these different bars, and they like you know they're all branded, so then you just you know it's like free advertising for them. But then can you've got all these hot. cups. I'm assuming they can take hot liquid. Depends which ones. Some mm. of the the more the stronger ones mm. can, but then you know all these flimsy ones, I probably wouldn't melt. Mm. Wouldn't risk it. Just melt. <laughs> just melted plastic tea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Not what you want for your parents <laughs> on a weekend. <laughs> then again. I I I I say it's rare occasion that I sit down with my parents for a cup of tea in my flat. No, very like, rare. You wouldn't want to. Yeah, you'd like go somewhere for a cup of go BTP. Please be great. Yeah, that's another thing because you've got. It is great you know, in your room. Master Diva is great. I it really is. do like yeah. it. Yeah, because in, in your room you've got your bed, your desk, a single chair. Mm-hmm. If you've got your parents come over, that's another two people. Where they if they're not going to sit on the chair, 
or if you, you know, one of your parents sit on the chair then you've got that's it the other one on the bed you know like that that hanging off the your, bed kind of thing on the edge of the bed your brother was just sitting on the floor bad back mm. yeah it's, just, it's, it's, not, not, it's ideal, not ideal so, yeah. not at all I actually came to uni with um, four plates last year oh organised left with two <laughs> Actually, left with one. I had to go and buy some more. I think two broke and one I lost. I did break a plate recently. I, I remember I brought a glass up to a prize in my building last year and then did not make it out that night. No. <laughs> Came back without the glass and then sort of forgot about it for about two months and then I messaged them like, you got a random glass float about? Like, no, it's long gone. You lose quite a lot of stuff. You it, like all that stuff. I used to lose a lot in my flat. Teaspoons. Teaspoons. Where Someone steals <laughs> spoons, don't they? I've looked in all I have looked in like all the drawers and everything. Just largely It's like, so confusing. Yeah. Remote? I've lost a remote before. Like remote. and it popped up, I don't know, six months later. A small, a small little IR fun. remote for a little laser that I had. Oh fair enough, that's different though. That's like not a TV remote. Uh yeah. Actually, I have misplaced that. You, I don't know. Yeah, you, can lose it. you can lose that sort of thing, flat or no flat. You lose that thing at home. Yeah. But it, it's rare that you'd lose Teaspoons, cutlery. Yeah. And a lot of time, though, it could just be your, your flatmates borrow it and then forget <laughs> to return it, or they'll, you know, they'll go to wash it up and then it's just in the sink or on the dry and you just forget that it's there because no one told I'm, you. I'm bad for borrowing stuff, but I'm good for returning it. <laughs> like, if I borrow something, it'll always get returned and always be clean. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, you, have you ever actually binned a spoon before? I've done that one accidentally. I don't think so. Went to bin the yoghurt pot. Uh, common mistake. Mm, common, common it's mistake. A <laughs> you know, you, you, you've had your yoghurt, you've got the spoon in the pot, mm. and you go to the bin and you just go, whoop. I don't get how that is a common mistake. Because, say. It's because you're thinking about something else. You, yeah, you've had, like, you're holding you've had two yogurt. things. It's not often, it's rare. No, as in the spoon, yeah, I, I keep the spoon in the yoghurt pot. once, though. <laughs> No, I, I wouldn't say it's almost happened a few other times, but I'd say it's happened properly once. <laughs> Binning cutlery, yeah, accidentally with a uh, with going out food, well, from outside food or takeaways or anything, mm. could accidentally leave it in the pot. Oh, okay. no, I've had it a lot of times where people in my flat will take your like, bits of food that they think you won't notice, and then you do milk. cereal, oh, so milk, milk yeah. squash. When I when I moved oh, out of my no. flat after first year, one of my flatmates came up to me and they said, "Oh, I'm so, Tom, sorry, but I've been using your butter all year." <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. What did and you say? Yeah, I know. I said, "Oh, yeah, I, I, I could tell because every time I'd go in, there'd be like a knife mark just through the butter." <laughs> you know what? If you're gonna use butter, I'm very Do strict on this. You know, please go from left to right. The pe- no, some people back do you front. dig well back to front do you, you do, you, do you, oh hell no don't dig you don't no, dig do you that's wrong that's just people dig they do they yeah do. <laughs> and I it's hate that like, I hate that like what type of path is digging it also, does yeah, my head in I can do not tell, dig through the butter I can tell you've taken the butter when I always just spread the butter and then suddenly there's a massive just hole in the middle of it yeah there, there you like, go there you go there you go that's the exact <laughs> scenario well they squash the big ones I, I think it's L- almost it's kind of acceptable when it's something that maybe you've forgotten about until you're halfway through cooking so butter maybe maybe you were doing a meal and it involves a little bit of butter just to like fry something I kind of get that because there's you don't want to go out to Tesco and buy a, buy a block of butter yeah. whilst you're actually mid, mid cooking but squash that's Daily. not something you're like, no. I need some squash to make oh, my this. Sausage pasta's missing its squash. Literally, like, <laughs> well, no. it's a It was my uh, friend's flat, and mm-hmm. the squash, he'd never opened. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know, because he didn't like, it was that summer fruits, but I think it was barley or something. And oh, he was I like, I'm, oh, I'm never nice. going to have that. So mm-hmm. he kind of just left it in his cupboard. Mm-hmm. And then one week it was opened, and then the next, it had reduced, and a bit more. And then oh, by so the end of the year, it was yeah, gone. So Magically, the squash opened just it. opened itself and then disappeared. Well, yeah, so he was just kind of, he was fine with it. Yeah. But yeah, it's still squash going missing. No yeah. one ever told I always have that with tomato I sauce as well. squash. Oh, yeah, fair. So, you know, Sauces, I'll, ketchup. I'll, I'll buy, yeah, I'll buy tomato sauce, and then suddenly I'm like, hmm. I, you won't notice, because it'll be in small quantities. And then, you know, I'll be like, somehow I've gone through a whole bottle in a week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Missing food. I don't know, it's something that you can discuss with your flatmates, but if you don't really care, I like butter. I'm like all for it. I don't really mind. You know, I'd rather you yeah. tell me. Yeah. Just so I can replenish mm. my stock 
you the know, thing is, if you're not, if you're using a tiny bit, <laughs> what would telling you even do? Like, uh, yeah, true, that true. That true, I that. see where you're coming from. Tell them, but I don't know. Sometimes it's just that something that kind of happens at uni. Like, if someone takes any of my milk bottle, I'm like, feel uh, free. Yeah, like, you don't. If really you'd care. asked, I would have said yes anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, of course, yeah. But it's just that one time, say you have a little bit of milk left, mm. like enough for one bowl of cereal, yeah, and then you go back and someone's had a tea portion of milk and it, uh, it doesn't yeah, yeah, bring it to that bowl of cereal mm. enough milk. Yeah. That's when it gets annoying because that's, that's when you have to specific, go. That's specific though. This, this has happened to me. It is like, it's fine, one of my mates took it and it's just like, mm. oh great, now I have to go to Tesco. That's when uh, we lived in yeah. James Watt. So, you know, so, if, so if Tesco was, was a bit more of a mm. walk. So that was me and someone used my stuff and I had to get the train back to Aldi. <laughs> well, that's a bit more... <laughs> An hour of life's gone for this one bit of butter. Oh no, someone's used my pasta, guess I'll have to get the train to... <laughs> replenish this. Two pound train for a 99p yeah. pasta. <laughs> 99p pouch. Mm. Do you, oh, I'm intrigued now, do you buy the, the normal pasta or like, do you buy a and m kind of... Big 10 Egg kg. No. You know what? I saw like a massive box, a bag of tea. It had like mm. a stupid amount of tea bags in it. Right. Them, actually. But yeah, sorry, pasta. I'll, I'll only buy the standard amounts, but I'll just have, you know, I'll go for the different shapes. So I'll have one of each and then like a spaghetti and a. Ah, of course. Penne, oh, for silly, yeah. ones. You know, maybe some spaghetti, mm. linguine. Oh, only, only if you're fancy for the linguine. Yeah, linguine is very nice. Which one's linguine? It's like it's spaghetti, spaghetti, but it's thin. flat. Yeah. That's tagatelli. No, no, Tangy Telly, I think, is wider. Linguini's in the middle, I think. I'm not a fan of the wide ones, they stick together. I don't like Tangy Telly, but I love Linguini. Oh, Weird. Okay. Weird, yeah. I don't like Tangy Telly. That's a childhood thing. <laughs> Every other pasta, go for it. The deep trauma there. You know one no, thing I've never had at uni? Lasagna. What? I've Why never sat and made lasagna. No, did they make it? Yeah. Really? Okay, brilliant. Hats like, off. Like every week that we have lasagna. <laughs> Wicked. You know? I think lasagna is a great meal. It's like my mate and is Not enough week. people have it. But like, why Why don't you put the effort in to make lasagna? We can just have gone late. Well, there you go. Alright, it's so much easier. Lasagna is. Oh, there's just something about it though. Yeah. It's like. Lasagna is like a pasta bake, but with yeah. extra steps. Yeah. And I can never say no to a pasta bake. Fair enough. We've got all the cheese on the top. On the top, and you've grilled it, you've ovened it, then grilled mm. it, so it's got Ooh, a char. Ooh, that's, that's... And you know what? That is a meal that I'd say you can make at uni in less than half an hour. With your burnt garlic bread on what? the side and your... Yeah. I have made... No? Yeah, well, you know, a pasta bake, not a lasagna. Oh, I'll say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. You know, you, you just buy a pasta, a pack of pasta, you buy your jarred sauce, mm. and then you just throw it all in, well, you cook it and throw it all in and whack some cheese on top. And that's pretty much it. Well, that freeze it, done. Yeah, there you I've go. I've got something in my freezer, actually. So. Freeze, the freezer can become your best friend at uni if you want yeah. to utilise it. Especially if you're making food... Like, Say you go to the market and you buy a load of onions. Yeah. You just make a load of food, which is something that you can freeze. Yeah, you cook in bulk. Yeah, yeah like a sauce. Or Stews. whatever. Oh, yeah, and then you just freeze it, and it's kind of just there and ready for when you need it. Definitely, yeah. So I, I used to cook in bulk a lot. So actually, um, one time I did this massive piler. Oh, nice. and, um, I never realised nice. that this is the first time I ever cooked pilot. I never realised the rice like expands as you cook it. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, um, oh, did... I used a whole pack of rice. What a bag? A bag. <laughs> yeah, a whole bag of pilot rice. So I was making making it bulk, and um, <laughs> I went through like sort of four chicken breasts as well for this massive pilot. Like loads of different peppers, yeah. onions, yeah. sweet nice, corn, all this kind of stuff. Brilliant. And then I started cooking, it was all going well, and then the rice started expanding. <laughs> and then, Did it boil over? Um, no, because I, I ended up meshing, it was all of my flatmates, mm. and I would ask them for their pans, and then I, I think by the time the rice was done, I used four different <laughs> sauce pans. Oh, um, pie. So I had oh, one, like, one, yeah, one full <laughs> sauce pan of pie on every single hob in the flat. <laughs> and it literally, it lasted for a good week of just lunches after that. Brilliant. It was great, like it. but I never realised how much it made. And I was just... That's a lot of rice. You know, me thinking I'd make two meals or three meals or something, and I'd end up with like lunch for a week, just a <laughs> paella rice. I used to do like bulk making as well, but it took me a while to get used to the electric hobs. So there's one time I was doing the massive bolognese, like huge, like for like a week at least. Um, and so I got to the point, I made it, and I was just reducing it down. But I had it going for like an hour, but it wasn't really going down much. And I was like, 
So I took a bit, there's no lid on it, so it should have been reducing. I left it for another half an hour, get a bit stir, another half an hour, came back, wrong hob. Because you can't so you just see turn the wrong the hob flames. on. <laughs> It's just the wrong hole. So you just had a bolognese sauce sat on the pan, just for hours. Not, not even cooked. Stirring it every now and again. And I was going, it's not reducing. Why is it reducing? But it was still warm because it would like retain the heat. So I was like, I, I assume it's reducing. Apparently not. Yes. Well, that is so in, in Birmingham, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that you, you know, if you come on a day trip, you'll never see. But then when you're at uni and you're just exploring the city, and you'll, you'll find all these crazy places that you never even knew existed. Mm. For example, your canal fact, Priyush. Yeah, so the canals in Birmingham are actually uh, bigger than the ones in Venice, and you wouldn't think about that because Venice longer. is uh, longer, sorry, in terms of miles. Mm. Um, but you wouldn't think, well, it's the last thing you'd think of about Birmingham, <coughs> wouldn't you? You'd think, oh, surely the Big place London. that's known for their canals is going to be going to have the longest. But yeah, Birmingham has the longest canals. Um, and yeah, there's just loads of things to do around different canal points in the city, like we start off by mailbox it's a bit more of a uh, upper class it's not it, it defeats yeah it's bougie it defeats the whole student always, saving thing oh, it definitely does. but again it's nice to do that kind of mm. thing you know in the mailbox there's there's the Nando's if you want to go Nando's there's a um, place you can get some tapas there's a few of the restaurants oh, bars that's, that's brilliant brilliant right and there's yeah. also tea I'll... oh I've got loads of card and everything so, yeah I forgot the name as well um but yeah, it's great in the summer. I went on the bank holiday weekend, yep. and my God, it was outside, everything was warm, it was a bank holiday Monday, um, the bars were busy, and we were outside just eating some tapas, and it's probably the best thing I've ever done. Um, outside? I... As in, they've got a little outdoor bit. Yeah, just to be, yeah they open up in the that. summer, it just, they have like a little canopy, and the glass doors open up, Ooh. and yeah. um, it's only like, I think there's about 10 tables out there, for two, 10, 15 tables, for two or four, oh, okay. and just eating tapas outside with a nice cold beer was one of the best things, and then walking down the canal when it's so warm, and going up to... Oh, it's so nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's wicked, it's so nice to look at, and then mm. there's the little bridges in between to go to canal house Mike it's yeah. uh, somewhere uh, interest for you so it's a little little bar actually it's a massive bar um, bar restaurant opposite the HBC headquarters um, does pretty good food cool cocktails hot bartenders um, nice yeah yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's good go visit go try it uh, one one funny thing I saw about the canals was um, I was walking down the canals near University of Birmingham. Right. Yeah. And um, suddenly I just hear this this music. This is you know just nothing around really. It's just mm. like the train tracks with no trains going past. And I just hear this music in the distance and it's getting louder and louder. And as I I can see the canal in the distance and then when it finally comes up to me, I realise it's um. About, you know sort of twenty people on this massive canal boat mm. having oh, a massive wicked. party. Yeah. And um, literally, I was on the side of the boat. Said you could hire the boat for a day, and then just have a day party on the canals. Wicked. And the oh. guy, like the guy, drives it for you, and you just go up and down the canals of Birmingham with your beers. Why would you not want to do that? You see, you know, if it's a sunny day, and you have got all your mates, and you think, you know, running out of things to do, I don't want to go sit at the pub for the whole day. We've hire a canal that. boat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> go to all the pubs. Go to all the pubs. Yeah. Jump on and off. That was it. Just yeah, there you that go. Was, yeah, Paris today. Good. That was the tapas place yeah. in the mailbox. Yeah. Um, up, up in the mailbox, still we've got a Luna. That's uh, much more of a. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It's a nicer cocktail bar. It's more upmarket cocktail bar and uh, mm. food. But I tell you, if you want to go there for a quick drink on a, on an evening, especially in the summer, it's wicked. Mm. Got a nice outdoor seating area. Like again, five or eight seats just to sit outside. Um, yeah, that's one thing that's good about Birmingham is that because there's so much to offer and there's so much stuff because it is the second biggest city and it's also close you've got um, I think there's it's got the second most Michelin stars out or yeah, that, something that's like not that. London in the country so you've got you know if you've got all this money to spend not that most of us do mm. you, you can you know you could eat out in loads of different Michelin star restaurants or you know, you could just cook in your flat and well, no, there's so brilliant. much different it's brilliant to have the options here because when you have Maybe, I don't know, if you have a, your girlfriend or boyfriend's birthday, you know, and you want to do something a bit more special out the blue, you could maybe save up and go to a very nice Michelin star restaurant, yeah. have a few drinks there. And then you're still, because again, I cannot stress enough how close everything is, you can still literally walk back to your accommodation. Yep. 
like you, there's, you don't have to think about a hotel or anywhere else to stay. You literally, or you don't even need to worry about the trains because the Ubers here are brilliant. As oh well. god, yeah, Uber everywhere. Well, no, I either walk everywhere. And it, once you pass walking, mm. if it's too dark and the trains are stopped or whatever, you literally Ubers are so convenient. Oh, do you know? Yesterday, I tried to save some money and get the bus to where I was going. Um, I just Google Maps it, found the bus that went there. Went there, it was like two fifty. I realised it was the wrong, completely wrong place, but with the same road name. And then I had to get oh. Uber <laughs> to that other place. Right. Which sort of defeated the purpose. The point of saving a bit of money, but I doubled it. it was so far away. It was so far in the wrong direction. It's all right. Human error can uh, yes. count for that one. Mm. Other places, other things that you might not know. Oh, have you ever been to the library before? The library in the, the actual Birmingham City Centre Library. It's yep. cool. It's very um, cool. It's really futuristic. But if you go right to the top, which most Rooftop. people don't know about, no, there's yeah, a really top secret area. What? And then if you keep going up above that as well, there's a. A Shakespeare room, so it's got loads of Shakespeare's like old books and his old plays, and it's, it's got some of his like floor panels yeah. from his old house when when he actually lived there, yeah. like hundreds and hundreds of year old, like years old. Oh, that, yeah. And you know, not, most people won't even realise it unless they actually go in. Yeah. But it's literally, you know, it's got. It's, I think it's one of the biggest sort of Shakespeare um, artifacts sort of places in the world. Mm. That just no one knows about. It. It's just there. <laughs> it I is see. cool. A little fact about that, for a while, there was not many books in that library. Just because really? they built the library, didn't, they didn't have any take into account the cost of the books. And um, so it's just a bit... So it's just a library with no still, books. It still doesn't have... It's not full, full, many books. yeah. Like, but it's just a cool place to be, and if you mm. want to do some... If you want to do some learning about a specific topic and the books there, you know, I'm sure they've got online services and whatnot to mm. check out what's there. It's just a good place to go, and it's so cool just to be on that rooftop. Mm. But also, the rooftop, like if, if the university, then the university library, if they don't have the book you're looking for, mm. yeah. you can then go to the Birmingham library, and it's likely they'll have it there, or they'll have an online version. Or saying that, you can request they get books at the university library. I've done yeah. that a few times. Yeah. Mm. It's really good. Or even if you just want somewhere, want somewhere different to go and check out yeah. Birmingham library. Mm. If you're um, more of a shopper side, you've got the newly opened world biggest Primark. Oh yes. Right on the edge of the board. I'm not, I'm not as big a fan of that though, because a lot oh, of it's I'm just not, like no, Disney yeah, stuff and a I'm cafe. A and huge and, Primark fan. I'm like, one way right now, Primark. Primark. Mm. Primark? I'm not nice. So we're, we're just looking, I'll give you everyone a visual description. We're looking oh, yeah. at Mike right now. And he's pointing I'm out everything that, that he's wearing. Maybe he needs to invest some money in clothes. <laughs> uh, saying that, this is from work. No, but linking right. that to the broke student section, you know, yeah. you've got the world's biggest Primark on your doorstep. White t shirt, three quid, done. There you go. I'm about 20 of them. Last, time I, went, last time I went, the white t shirts were on offer for £1.80 oh. each. Why didn't you call me? <laughs> yeah, Stock up. If you're definitely on the budgeting side, mm. hit up Primark. Mm. But it is crazy to think that a t-shirt is cheaper than, you know... A bar of chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> or a pint of beer, or even a pint of Coke sometimes. Just yeah. A t-shirt right. is cheaper. Mm-hmm. In Primark. And then, um, also, like, Birmingham's quite famous for the Peaky Blinders and sort of that show. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've watched, yeah. if you've watched Peaky Blinders, but if you go to Gas Street in Birmingham, yeah. on sort of another near the mailbox and the canals, they've got loads of old buildings and you know you can see sort of where they get their inspiration from from for all the filming but again if you don't know if you didn't know where it was you'd never um you'd never see it and you'd miss you know all the canal boats lined up all the old buildings with the, the oh, chimneys yeah, yeah. and the there's a bar Blinders bar in there is yeah. end? i think it's i think it's recently fairly recently rebranded like the year we came here so 2019, it was like rebranded. 2018, sorry, it was rebranded as Peaky Blinders Bar. But it looks all right. They've gone for a very no-nonsense sort of thing. It's weird, they've aimed it at people that probably won't watch that much Peaky Blinders. So they've aimed it at like, I don't know, 60-year-old guys. 
Well, did you see last year there was a Peaky Blinder Festival in Digbeth? There was, yeah. Because I, I ended up, I was actually at Digbeth Dining Club that mm. weekend. And there's literally, I was just having some food, you know, listening to some music, mm. and then suddenly, sort of 200 people all dressed up in the Peaky Blinder <laughs> uniforms, like the, you know, the suits with the pocket watches, the flat caps. They just turned up <coughs> out of nowhere. And they're all dancing in this car park to um, a live band. Yes, but I had no idea this was a thing. Bit, that can happen at any point in Birmingham. A group of lads turn up in black caps. Any point, <laughs> given any given day, that can happen. Like even the dancing bit. To be honest, I've seen a load of flash <laughs> mobs in the <laughs> in the city oh. centre of Birmingham. A lot yeah. happens here. It's yeah. so underrated. I saw a Bastille. So underrated. Actually. Bastille. They did an advert in. Um, I was there. They did what? an advert in New Street Station. You saw that? And as I was going through the station, they were filming it. Was there that people. for the E? Was that E? It was, yeah, it was the, the E four, adverts. 5G? E <laughs> yeah, yeah, so advert? there was Kevin Baker and Bastille were stood there. Really? And Bastille wow. was singing and then they were like, sh- like I don't know, FaceTime or whatever on the phones. The thing is, I don't think they were. The advert says they were. I was there, don't think they were. Oh, I saw him, the guy. I know they were there. They were there, but yeah, were they, they singing it? I don't yeah. think they live streamed it. Oh, no, I don't, they probably didn't know the live streaming bit would have been yeah, the actual film. He says we live streamed it, it really annoys me because I'm like, just live stream it to make it real. It was, It's a cool advert though, and yeah. it's a cool place to mm. do it. What song did they do? Uh, oh, it wasn't Pompeii, was it? It might have been. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sorry, just give everyone a little. I cannot. So, what is it again? No, we're not going to hear that again. <laughs> no, it's fine, I'll loop it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, should we make a sample out of this um, podcast? You're going to be the transition music. Just be good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I can't remember, but it was a very good advert. And mm. it's so cool that they did it down the road. Yeah. yeah. Weird place to do it, though. Grand Center Station. Well, it, yeah, it it's, it's, an, it's an iconic place now, I think. It's quite. It's, well, not iconic, but... It's, it's one so, of the busiest in the UK. Yeah, and mm. it's so, like... I'd say it just works, doesn't it? It's, it's not complicated. Like... It's very well thought out yeah. in but terms of efficiency. Yeah. Yeah, well, Brilliant. you've got John Lewis mm. that covers mostly everything. You know, you've got the general Tesco and you've got loads of food places. What else do you need in a train station? And a link to the, the shopping centre down the road. Yeah, sure. Bastille scene. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Some life That's, it. Some life That's all it is. From Bastille, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed our random chat and some facts about Birmingham and university life. If you want to listen to more, please support the podcast and we might be able to get some more out to you guys. Yeah, do it. Uh, I'm, I'm serious. Put it on loop. Well, yeah, put it on loop. Um, just get us playing. Just press play loads of times, yeah. maybe. Send you know, friends. Just let the SU know that we've um, that you, you like what we're doing and that like you want to listen to more. Yeah, we've Thank enjoyed you. doing this and I, we hope you've enjoyed it too. Yeah. So enjoyed listening to our ramble yeah, about yes. Birmingham. Yeah. And thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>